Hey YouTubers, Brett Vader here, Lord Darth Vader, 1701 here. Um, I kind of got a, not a dilemma, but an issue that um, I kind of need some help on. I've got my clutch system and the variator system, you know, about ready to put together and put it back on the bike and all that neat stuff. Uh, no brokens or nothing, just kind of a, a thing that I'm trying to be uh, very careful in regards to getting it right, if you will. Um, first thing is, on the variator, the I put new seals on, and, you know, right here, put new seals on, and where this spindle goes, um, there's... <coughs> grease inside. It's got to be greased. I bought this stuff called Ultram Ultramatic, Ultramatic Grease. It's a very high temperature, uh, high pressure primary clutch uh, assembly grease and it was very expensive. But it's made by Yamaha and it's something that's recommended. Um, it's, it's, it's basically the replacement of this shell BT3 grease that was used originally that's no longer available in the manual it says you have to use this grease that's you know high pressure and high temperature can't be a lithium based uh, or any soap oil soap uh, based oils uh, in the grease it's got to be a polyura type grease and this one here fit the, fits the bill so I bought it. I bought a tub of it. I got some tubes coming of it, but I couldn't wait. I kind of wanted to get it together, if you will, and and uh, start working on it. Uh, I'll just have grease up the bazooby for a while. But anyways, my biggest question is for, on the variator, if anybody knows or anybody has any kind of ideas, um, I've packed in some grease here. I'm just not really sure on how much I should put in here. Now, none can be on the outside. I know that. No grease on the outside here. Because this is where the belt rides on. sits on. But it actually rides up this... It rides up this channel here. Um, on this cup. But... And this has got to be nice and dry. But there's grease in here because it sits on a spline shaft. And... This... You know, it spins. You know, it'll spin... Uh, you know, it turns in here. Uh, there's also grease inside this behind here. And the seals keep the grease from coming out here. I put new seals on deliberately. Uh, I figured I'm this far, I might as well tear, if I tear into it, uh, I'd rather put brand new stuff in so that way I know that I've got, you know, brand new stuff. Now, again, my question is I'm not sure how much grease to put in here. If I should put a whole bunch in, sits on the spine shaft, there's holes in here, there's little holes in there, like I showed on the previous video, on this variator, on this shaft here, let me pull it out, see I put grease in here, I'll do one thing at a time here, okay, I put grease in here, now I'm not sure, I made it a thin wall of grease, if you will, because that's kind of what was there, um, you know, it's a thin wall of grease, let me get a better shot on this if I can for you. And I made it nice and clean, you know. And then I put a little grease in here that rides on the spline shaft. That's not a big deal. This here was the part that I wondered about. This does have holes in it. And I'm sure the grease probably goes on the spline. You know, the centrifugal force and all that stuff. They probably shoot through each other. But, um... You know, and the seals, again, keep the grease from going anywhere with this ultramatic, you know, this heavy-duty stuff. Um, I just wonder if there's, if I should, before I put this together in the next few days, if I should put more grease, you know, put more grease in here. You know, behind here, and then just slide this dude in. That's what I'm kind of thinking about doing, but I want to get some opinions if I could. Uh, again, on the other side, this is where the weights are, you know, 
the roller weights going here. I got to do that yet. Uh, I got to make sure that this thing has no oil film on it. You know, I got to make sure it's nice and clean, dry. You know, so what I'll do before I just put it together, I'll put, I'll use uh, brake cleaner, to make sure that this is nice and clean. So, anyways, that's the issue on my variator. The second project, put this over here, because in the book, real quick here, in the book, um, it doesn't say. You know, it really don't tell you anything. Uh, you know, a typical service manual. Um, it doesn't say anything about, you know, grease in here. It says grease, but it doesn't say, you know, is it supposed to be neat? Uh, you know, is it supposed to be, you know, lots, a spoonful, you know, type thing? What? So I'm just asking some questions if anybody knows. Um, one of the other things I put in here was not applicable, was they want you to put uh, grease on the uh, weights. Well, that's not for this particular application. This is for ATV applications. So you have to make sure you don't... These things are dry. And they were dry when I pulled them out. So, um, roller weights, you don't do that. The next uh, little project I have is my clutch. This thing here, um, I'm trying to make a tool because the spring has to be collapsed, okay? Spring has to be collapsed to be able to get this carrier nut off. Now I'm going to have some pictures showing this tool. Either I think they'll either go at the end of the video or whatever, but there'll be some pictures showing this tool and some steps on how he did it. Not with this particular type of clutch, but basically the same thing. It's just his doesn't have the uh, clutch pads. It's just got the, the, be the belt bell and the uh, spring and then this carrier nut. Well to get this carrier nut off you have to collapse the spring a little bit more. Then this turns off and then you release the clutch tool and it will expand back out so where the spring is no longer holding this so you got now you can take this pack and do what I want to do with it. If, if I were to replace it or if I want to inspect the springs that are in here uh, whatever you know. But I Looked around, and the tool that they say to use is something like this. And you'll see another variation of it, but this was one of the tools that they showed. It's actually uh, kind of like this, but there was another one that's actually, it's a circle. It's actually a circle type, and it sits more in here. It sits more inside here. And it allows you still to be able to take this off, because when you take the pressure off of this, this comes loose. Uh, but to put it back on, you have to collapse it all the way to be able to get the thread back on a little bit. Well, uh, the tool, this one here, didn't ain't working. Unless I weld a bar across here and support this extra, well, I come up with another thing that uh, kind of worked, but with the threaded rod... Um, with the threaded rod idea, I, I have to weld this in place so that way it don't move and want to turn when, because up here, this is where the nut is. Well, you'll see again another variation. Basically, it's got a, a, a plate right here. There's a plate instead of what I've got. Okay, no nut on the back side, just a plate. It's welded to it, threaded rod welded to it, and threaded up through, you know, through here. Uh, you know, picture this, picture this being underneath, okay, thread it up through, and uh, just like in, you'll see in the pictures, and then this sits on top of that, goes through the rod, thread a rod, and the nut goes on here, and you, you tighten it until it collapses in the nut. Well, this didn't work as it bent, uh, gives on me. So, uh, the other item was, I tried, um, this is a really heavy duty um, uh, pipe clamp. I mean really freaking heavy duty. It did not bend. I had to use a couple of bolts or you know, spacers if you will like that. Okay, so I had my spacing here. So I could still 
loosen it and put it back on like I needed to, you know. It worked, but the rod turned on me. So I figured, oh, okay, fine. That means I got to weld this dude in place. Um, when I showed the pictures, I'm trying to see if there's some other idea. The other thing is, I'm not sure if this thing has collapsed as far as it will go. I don't know how to tell that, to be honest with you. That may sound stupid, but I'm not sure exactly. I think it, give a, it gave a little bit. It did go down a little bit when I was tightening it originally with this new setup. Okay. With my uh, bracket there and, you know, with this bracket. Not this one, this bracket here. And this here. But the rod started turning on me. So I couldn't go no further. It was like, okay, that's all she wrote. And then it would have probably taken the pressure off to take the carrier nut off. Well, I don't know that. But I wanted to see if anybody, when you look at the pictures, if anybody has an idea if I should weld this together, make it, a, make it one piece, you know, weld this together and make it one piece. This is my block, if you will, at the bottom, which sits right here. And... Uh, continue on the process that I created with this. You know, spacer and all that good stuff. But you can't find the dang tool. If you do find it, it's like $80 or something. It's ridiculous. I'm not paying $80 for a freaking threaded rod tool with a, with a steel bracket. It's just nuts. But anyways, the other question I had, this has got bearings on it. And I've not done anything with it. I've not changed, you know, deleted any oil or grease. I mean, or anything like that. I was wondering if I should put bearing grease on here. I know I got a few questions on this, guys, but I'm just kind of asking for help if anybody re even watches this and if they might know. Uh, if I should put more grease on the bearings itself, you know, these bearings here, before I push this onto the uh, spline shaft, the actual shaft that it goes on, which is not a spline shaft, it's, it's just a solid machine shaft. Uh, the bearings, you know, I have grease on them, but I thought maybe if I added more. I know more grease doesn't hurt, but should I do that? And what grease should I use? If anybody has any idea, what kind of grease should I have? I've got this stuff. You know, i got this real good stuff, which is the Ultramatic. I've got a, 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 a high pressure grease. You know, extreme pressure grease. Um, I think I've got some bearing grease, but uh, anyways, that's kind of my... Three questions. Again, the amount of grease on my variator. The, second, the other one is, <clears throat> the second question number two is the tool. Should I weld this and, and try it? Or is there something else that uh, somebody has any neat ideas on? And number three, how much grease should I, should I put any more grease on them bearings? So that's the video. And then also you'll see the pictures showing, demonstrating how the guy uses it. If anybody's got any ideas on, you know, if I'm going, if I'm in the right direction here, then this is for my Yamaha again. So, and like uh, Suburban Rider mentioned uh, to, uh, meant, you know, put in the title about my Yamaha, and it, very good idea. I never, I just don't think of things like that sometimes, but, you know, get tongue-tied, if you will, or typewriter tied, um, <laughs> keyboard tied uh, when I'm uh, typing this crap in. But, you know, BC65925 has got some cool uh, ideas. I mean, he does some pretty cool stuff. Uh, NTA does. You know, you guys, you know, Sprinter Cowboy, Gentleman's Nine. Those are just shout-outs, too, for you guys. RC62, you know, these are all things you guys do. Um, you know, you're mechanically inclined also. So I thought I'd pick some brains out there or anybody else that wants to watch this, see this video. And uh, please comment or make a... Uh, and a video answer to it. I uh, appreciate whatever you could do if you have any uh, comments on this thing. Uh, I would like to kind of, while I got this apart, I'd like to really figure out how to work on this. So if I ever have to replace these clutch pads, which one day I will have to, that I've already got the, I'm already prepared. I already got the tool. I've already done it. Bender done that thing. You know, that kind of stuff. So again, uh, that's what this video is. It's just kind of a question video on some uh, how-to a little bit on what I really need to do. I'm kind of, uh, you know, fumbling a little bit there and uh, on these, you know, three issues. And I just kind of 
want to know if I can get some answers from the the other YouTube world out there. So uh, appreciate whatever you guys can do, and uh, that's uh, Vader out. That's it for now. Thanks, Vader out.